There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. As I told a friend, my life is kind of like Shrek. The, the years keep coming and they don't stop coming <laughs> down to the floor and they hit the ground running. No, it has too many layers to it. It's too <laughs> complex. I, I, think, I think we need to peel that onion on down. And I think today's the right day for it. Greetings and welcome most graciously to our audio blog where we discuss various topics on a weekly basis and in loquacious, long-worded form. I'm Zeb. And I'm Eamon. And together we are your two hosts of this here podcast show. Of this of this podcast and audio blog, the Butt Year Podcast. <laughs> available on iTunes and various broadcasting platforms. This is an audio show where we tell you things that we've been thinking about for the week, but we also do have a focus for this week in particular on this, this, the most 12th of Julys. Now we are going to vibrate our, our, uh, the things in our throat, our vocal cords into this here um, sponge, sponge device with a little, little wires running down it. Sending sound waves into digital waves, which are then recorded, um, recalibrated, and then spat back out as um, into audio waves back to you um, at a later date. But first, this information comes from daysoftheyear.com, a good friend of our show, who's provided us with a lot of information in the past. And it's important that we sort of cite the sources and just really bundle everything together in a neat package of information before we tell it to you so that you know exactly where it's coming from the days of the year is a website which is a kind of um it's a kind of book on the computer but like the words change and if you click on different parts of the book um it goes to other books instead of turning pages it's like a yeah. like a fourth dimensional book almost in to break it down even more, a day is a unit of time, approximately the period of time during which the Earth completes one rotation with respect to the sun. It's usually called a solar day. Mm, as opposed to a, a lunar day? What's, what's a lunar day? Is that just night? <laughs> solar, of course, referring to the system of large gas blobs that we exist in on this planet. Ah, uh, invented by... But, but but that rotation around is different from the rotation because a year is also a rotation around the sun. But it's like going all the way around the sun. But for a day, it's just we've spun on our... Sp like we've done a full rotation on the spot, kind of like a, like a spinning top as opposed to a, a spinning top that goes all the way around the bowl, if you know what I mean. That's a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in short, um, it's Simplicity Day. We it's live right. in a complicated world with taxes and devices and every imaginable <laughs> complication the world can provide. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just take some time to keep things simple, to winnow down life to the bare essentials and hold on to it like the precious thing it is? Simplicity Day encourages you to do just that, to let go of all of life complications and live a day simple. I was... <laughs> What's winnow? I've never heard that word. Except I have an app on my computer that makes some random words occasionally. It's like automatically finds Magic the Gathering cards mm. and like gives you little pictures of them when you hover your mouse over it. And winnow is apparently a magic card. It costs one and a white. Um, destroy target non-land permanent if another permanent with the same name is in play. Now, that's a very simple way to say wreck that card. <laughs> You have, an, you have an extension that is making this simple day explanation more complex. Well, it's just, I love that. In particular, Magic the Gathering is a particularly complicated game. And sometimes to say a simple thing, it has to say stuff complicated because otherwise <laughs> it could be interpreted, interpreted, interpreted oddly. Yeah. Um, so it's Simplicity Day. Um, looks like this web page is brought to you by Adobe Cloud. Ride the pixels. And we're just sort of celebrating it by kind of cutting back on the amount of things that we explain before we say them. And we're not doing a very good job. 
But if it was another day, that introduction would have been even longer. And you don't want to hear that. It would have been the whole episode. We got through that as fast as we possibly could. Life's hard. <laughs> it's full of complexities. Sometimes it's hard to say a simple thing. You have to do it. You have to. You try to say a simple thing like, hey, today is Simplicity Day. But there's so many things to unpack in that to actually explain that thing. Yeah. What's a day? Where did the word simplicity come from? Like, what does simplicity even mean? Like, as a word, we have first have to understand what complexity is. Um, and complexity is, there's there are many types of complexity. There's normal complexity, which we think on a day-to-day basis. But then there's, like, science fiction, like, still not science fiction, but scientific complexity, as opposed to, like, like you know, chaos, all that stuff that I only half remember and I can't explain at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that that saying, uh, if you want to buy a car, you have to know how to make one. Exactly. That's that's true. You can't just tell someone, I got a new car. (laughs) You have to know every part inside the car. You have to talk them through the whole thing. Like, I imagine it's really difficult being pregnant because most of that time is actually learning how a human, how to make a human, like in massive detail. (laughs) Like this one, as as like as the baby's growing, you've got to be fully aware of what's connecting to what, right? That's how it works. Yeah, I mean, otherwise the pieces all just all the little baby jigsaws will just go together wrong, and you'll get like a real long baby, and that's not what you want. <laughs> no one deserves a long boy. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> there's a puzzle piece missing. Yeah, and then the baby might grow up and just have like calves that go forever up into the sky, and you don't want that. You want a boy that's smaller than you when you're 40 years old. You want you want a nice, simple, simplistic design, not something over convoluted and complex. Yeah, kind of like this day. Uh, this is a nice, simple day. It's time to sort of relax and uh, well, not necessarily relax. You can do it stressed. You can do it. Uh, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself to do this day correctly. But it's time to free yourself from the shackles of the modern world, I think, and go back to what your ancestors used to do. Yeah, just just eat rocks, all that stuff. The modern age actually affords a lot of like simplicity ability. Like you can throw out all those books, you can burn those libraries. We now have Kindles and audio, and our phones have all the audio books. The recommendation for this day, how to celebrate it, is step away from the computer and find a sunny nook with a cup of tea and a book to pass the time. That's a complex situation. You got You have to get a cup of tea to a tree. How do you do that? Yeah. You also got to find a sunny nook in the dead of winter. Like it's going to be cold by then. Which is kind of more specific to the southern hemisphere. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's true. We don't have any sun at the moment. It's still eternal darkness. <laughs> like, but like, this day encompasses all of the world. Um, they can't expect us to find a sunny nook. And then to get a cup of tea to a nook where a tree is, forget about it. It's not possible. I actually have a, I have an exact image of a place where I'd go for that, actually. In the dead of winter, though? Yeah. With a campfire. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, also- During that one, one, that one hour of daylight we get in the middle of the day, <laughs> I have like a little bit of time to- <laughs> burn that book walk in the forest or through fields and just feel the sun on your skin and the sounds of birds and insects these moments will be the ones that can truly set you free during these long moments take the time to relax and consider how you want to proceed in your life but who's going to pay the birds though like you've got to get the birds and insects all in one place together all singing at once have you ever tried to organize something with more than three people it's difficult oh (laughs) yeah it's the most complicated thing you can do all the time it's impossible. <laughs> the birds are just like, oh, no, I can't do that day. I got lunch. I, I, oh, no, I got work at the insect factory, says the insect. I don't know. Whatever insects do. Yeah. And then, like, the bird will have, like, D&D that's booked in for, <laughs> and the insects have LARP that they didn't really... They were like, oh, it's the biggest LARP weekend. I didn't realize until just the day before. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> Which has been my experience. Life. You know, as, as they say, life finds a way to make things more difficult and <laughs> <laughs> and ruin plans. Um, what can you cut out that buries you under complications that bring no benefits? Are there people or things you can remove that will make your life a little happier each day by the removal of these complications? This sounds like it's hinting at me to like 
take someone out. Yeah, it sounds like it's is suggesting it? murder. It sounds like it's suggesting first degree murder. It's just like, is life too complicated? Is there someone in particular that's doing that? That person, you know who it is? Get them. Get them. Maybe they come to the book club and they're always talking about like the, the romantic parts of the book and they just won't shut up about it and they always, they got like a certain color hair. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> their name's this. Murder them. Simplicity day. These questions can lead you to a simpler, happier life. Wouldn't it be nice to have peace of mind? Simplicity day can lead the way. Oh, Jesus. God. This is a Stephen this King is novel. Intense. This is just the, the 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 mind of a murderer. This is like an abstract being has like come and taken host in a in like something near you, and it's like I am Simplicity Day. <laughs> well, like it, it, it's this seems like the justification that a supervillain, like an alien supervillain, would probably use. It's like humanity, you, you're too messy, you're too complex. You know what's way better than all the humans? A smooth ball. Well, I've said all the humans. <laughs> That's, now it's simplicity day every day, and then he just chills out under a tree in a nook reading a book. <laughs> yes, all the tea is for me now. <laughs> he terraforms the earth so as to have something like this exact place always works, like it rotates with the sun or something. Everywhere on the earth is now just a nice sunny nook with, a, <laughs> yeah. with tea and a book. Yeah. <laughs> It's the ultimate form of life. It's like finally we have perfected it. This is what this is what it was for. What's the meaning of life? Oh, uh, you know, a sunny tree with a nook and a book. <laughs> <laughs> Only other thing I want to read from this is this quote from the very top, which is in character, in manner, in style, in all things, the supreme excellence is simplicity by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. A real person. It's a real name, you guys. That's, yeah, that's not made up. We thought this might have been one of the made up days of the year, but it's not. This guy's real. So that means the day's real, I assume. <laughs> I know. And also, like, the cover photo for this day is a, a woman holding a chicken for some reason. It's my favorite part. <laughs> Time to get back to basics. Grab a chicken. <laughs> pet it. Chicken would be a great, a great hipster pet. Like if I have, if I was gonna get a pet that I could have living in town, taking my chicken for a walk—that sounds dope. I mean, they are super relaxing creatures. They just walk around going. Yeah, yeah, they're so chill. I had one that used to attack us. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> the rest of them were super chill, and some of them were just so snazzy. Birds in general are such sna snazzy animal that animals, but like chickens among birds, don't seem like the most snazzy animal. But then every now and then, um. They have afros, they have flares. You see a cool chicken and you think, that could be me. Yeah, they're dressed for disco and they inspire, that's probably what inspired the whole disco fashion, I assume. Man, some birds are so cool. You see those ones that's like, just like, they just slide back and forth on a branch and that's their dance thing they do. <laughs> they just go, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. zoop. Looks like, they're not even, looks like they're not even moving their feet. They're just like sliding back and forth, going nuts. Oh, shit. Birds are beautiful. And then there's seagulls. Yeah, then there's the seagulls. Seagulls are pretty cool, though. They're just hungry, that's all. <laughs> yeah, they're just hungry boys. If someone only ever saw you when you were hungry, they probably wouldn't think very highly of you. <laughs> that's true. They'd be there like, you want a chip? And I'd just bash into the window. Like, I hate everything. Leave me alone, please. <laughs> just chasing people with food with all my friends who are also hungry. <laughs> 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 you catch me on my lunch break. I'm trying to hang. I'm trying to relax and just eat my hundredth burger for the fortnight. Yeah, I'm not going to be in a good mood. From a seagull's perspective, they're like, that person is eating so much food. <laughs> that can feed all my boys. <laughs> well, the other thing is from the seagull's perspective, that person is eating all my food. Yeah. What the fuck? He found my food. I want it back. I just have to trick him. Or something. I guess, like, birds don't respect ownership, per se. They're all communists, especially seagulls. No, eventually they'll seize the means of production. Well, not actually, some birds are very much not communists. They have their nest, they steal all your shit, and they're like, mm, keep the hell away, this is mine. This is my <laughs> nest. If anyone else touches it, I'm going to attack them. This is my territory. I'm getting real angry. <laughs> Man, bird talk. This has been Burb Talk. Welcome back to Bird Talk, a segment we're reintroducing. I think we did it once before. <laughs> 
Did we did we talk about birds once? We I named an episode Bird Talk because it was about technology, and then we just started talking about birds at the end. Oh man, birds are great. Remember the kakapo? The year of the kakapo, or the seagull. <laughs> the kakapos are gone. They're all gone. No, they're not all gone. There's some kakapos. They're pretty much all gone. They're done for at least. Yeah. They, well, you can, we can probably conserve them. I, I don't know if they want to be. <laughs> oh, well, do you hear that bird coming, singing for the simpler times? Things are getting complicated. Let's go somewhere more simplistic. Let's go to the ad zone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, the sweet song of capitalism. (laughs) Is your life too complicated? Is your life in any manner and style and in all things supremely lacking excellence? Because it's just so messy and so chaotic. It sounds like you need... A box full of birds. <laughs> Open. <laughs> it's kind of like that thing where the people order in the ladybugs and all the lady, like, like 50,000 ladybugs come out. It's actually not that many ladybugs. Imagine that, but it's birds. Various birds of all kinds. They're just singing their, singing their, their bird song. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> There's an emu in there too. One of every bird. It's a Noah's Ark of birds. Um, and now your life is just much more a- access to simplicity. Drink a tea in a room full of all these birds going absolutely ape shit. Well, the thing about having a hundred thousand birds is all you have to worry about is a hundred thousand birds because that's literally the only priority you can deal with right now. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it really, it really simplifies your problem. My problem seems so complex, but. In light of all of these birds wrecking my house. It's clearly the most important thing. It's so much better. It's so much better. Uh, uh, call uh, 1300 uh, birds, 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 birds. And then you'll get all the birds. Oh no, here comes an ice bird. <laughs> it's going to sink my Titanic of complexity. That's what you'll be like. <laughs> Oh, hey, we're back. Hello. Specifically, I'm back because I went for a walk, which was something I've been trying to do between using my computer for like between hours when I use my computer lately. I haven't done it much. Like it's not a habit yet, but like editing, I'll end up sitting here for three hours on in like one bump. And I've spent like eight hours at a computer plenty in the past Mm. just making music or something like that without a break. But I think... I think the recommendation is like every 45 minutes or some bullshit like that. It's like every like 23 minutes. Every small amount of time. Stand up. But I think I'm just going to stick to every hour is like a pretty achievable thing. And we already have this beautiful allocated amount of time that equals one, which is one hour. Why are we trying to break that up? People can't stick to that. <laughs> Every hour, I'm going to take a break and go for a walk. Yeah, well, I mean, it's better than nothing. Exactly. But also, every 20 minutes, you should also unfocus and refocus your eyes. That's also good for your eye health. No, I need that laser focus, though. Constant. Yeah, that's how you have it. If you're constantly using your eyes, they fall out. <laughs> that's how it works. I suppose when, but like the walk does that, as long as you're not looking at your phone while you walk. There's so many ergonomic things, so many ergonomic things. My last job, they like taught me how to sit in the chair properly and all that. They went, you sit horribly. And I was like, okay. So whenever they were in the room, I'd sit really nice and uncomfortable. (laughs) And then as soon as they were out of the room, I'm back to my slumped up cold fetal position being like, ah, I feel like a fetus at a laptop. This is much better. (laughs) Sitting like that guy at a death note. (laughs) If anyone's seen that. No, I don't know it. <laughs> Sits like with both feet on the chair. <laughs> it's actually really comfortable. Um, Comfort has nothing to do with ergonomics. Not to say I sit like that fully, but I do sit in weird positions and constantly move and fidget, which is good. I think that as long as you're moving a lot, not staying in the same rigid, horrible pose, I think that like it probably, if you average, if you got an average image of all the different ways I sit, it would make someone sitting really well. 
No, it's not how it works. I assume. Like if you like every like got the images and put them overlaid, they'd be like, wow, that person has great posture. <laughs> or it would look like a crazy alien. The other thing I was I was wondering, um, and I was hoping you were gonna stay at your desk, which is um how long was my walk from your perspective? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wandered off. Um, I think it's been 20 minutes. I have. But I think you've been back longer than I have. But my point is, like, it's weird how short things can take. Like, a walk can take seven minutes and feel like mm. an eternity. Like, it felt like empires rose and fell mm. as I transversed my city block and made my way around as, like... Our our country was got, like making its way to its end, and then like a new empire would rise, and governments would fall and crumble under the weight of the new pressures of the societal things that are happening in that world. <laughs> and all the while, um, I had to leave my phone here because I use it as a webcam when we record, and I can't be bothered unplugging it and taking it. So I just had like, mm, right. That's why when I sent the message saying, yeah, how long are you walking for? <laughs> no one said anything. I said, message me when you get back. <laughs> and they went, no reply. All right, I'll guess. Yeah, so I just had my mental MP3 player. That sounds horrible. You have to think. No, it was great. I was just I was listening to um, Carly Rae Jepsen's Run Away With Me. It's the perfect walking song. How's it go? Baby, take me to the limit. Wait, she has a second song? Yeah, yeah, she has a, <laughs> she has a whole good album. I like it. Oh, cool. Like the production and like the composition of everything is really cool. So I've got a couple of things I've been thinking about this week, but if you got anything you want to talk about, the stage is yours. Not in particular. Uh, I really, I've been playing God of War. It was really good. It's actually a really good game. It way beat my expectations on it. Like, it's like a cool mix of Dark Souls and like all these things I didn't expect out of what used to be just a shitty button masher. It's like if Bohemian Rhapsody was written by Henry by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and then made into a game. Exactly. It has in character, in manner of style, in all things, supreme excellence in simplicity. What have you got to talk about? <laughs> okay, I got a few things. You pick. I got my tiny Game Boy. I picked that. I got a I got a Google Doc I have open in front of me of like a page that I wrote collaboratively with a friend titled Oh no, all my guests are dead. <laughs> a murder mystery. Oh, it's like a story. <laughs> I want to hear both of those. Tell me about the Game Boy first, and then I want to tell, and we'll do a live reading of the story. Okay, so I backed um this crowdfunded little tiny Game Boy project that someone. Oh, that was a crowdfunded thing. That was a Kickstarter. It wasn't a Kickstarter. It was a crowd supply. Oh, that sounds like a ripoff. Which is just like the nerdy hacker version of Kickstarter, essentially. That sounds like a crowdsourced version of Kickstarter. <laughs> I am starting a new Kickstarter. <laughs> on, ki- <laughs> on Kickstarter, on Kickstarter they crowdsourced this other website. <laughs> this is a project that started, I don't know, this guy who's like a, a, a maker of uh, electronics and things like that found that this really popular chip could work really well for making a tiny little Game Boy. And so he sort of made one up with a 3D printer and like... Potatoes. Sort of figured it out. Um, it, the chip is an ESP32, which means nothing to anyone. They taste delicious. But he built this project around that. It got shown on Hackaday, which is where I saw it, which is like a cool website. You can go to see all like one thing per day that people are doing around the internet. Has it got the villain from um, that cartoon about the four kids doing that? I don't understand. And what? there's the big green man? No, it's not... <laughs> The, that the obscure hacker. ABC kids show or whatever you're thinking of. I think it, I think it was called Cyberspace. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a project that was built out of that. And now it's a um, a fully backed thing that just got, uh, like went past the expectations of how many people would probably pre-order it. Um, and it looks really nice and it's tiny and it plays Game Boy games. Do you keep it on your key ring? Uh, yeah, it fits on a key ring. It's tiny. Do you have, do you have it on your key ring? I'm scared to put it on my key ring because I have keys on my key ring. Maybe if I take all the keys off. Yeah, but that's the purpose. Now you can. That means you can play games anywhere on your key ring. Well, it's small enough to fit in my pocket. But yeah, I'm, I just don't want to destroy it with keys. I want to get destroyed by keys, I assume. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it did take a long time to get. I can see why you'd be cautious. Yeah. Should have got two. One for the keys and one, <laughs> one for the, the living room. Uh, so I'm playing Pokemon Crystal on it at the moment. Oh, the best one. 
Nearly as good as yellow. Um, and I'm lost in a town and I don't know where to go, but that's all right. I'll figure it out. Is it Goldenrod City? Because screw that city. I got lost there for about a year. As Which a one? Goldenrod City. I don't know. Maybe. Have you fought the lady with the, with the cows? <laughs> no, I've really only just started. I only just got to the second town. I've just been training oh, okay. up my boy. Oh, okay. Who's your boy? Who'd you, who'd you pick? Oh, uh, I named it Vines and it is... Oh, uh, Cinderquill. Yeah, Simbo Bill. You got the fire one then, because they burn vines. No, it's a Chikorita. <laughs> Wait, no, no, because you got the fire one because these vines are on fire, like like these are lit clips. <laughs> <laughs> lit clips. And that website was, was all right. It's gone now. Is Lit Clips available? Let me see. Let's make it. Lit Clips. Lit... It's... Each episode we promise a thing. This is the thing of this episode. Um, it's for sale. We can start a twelve month payment plan of lit clips. Um, of one hundred and sixty seven dollars per month. It's a real thing. Someone out there knew lit clips could be a thing, and they bought it, and now they, they want to sell it onto you. Uh, nah. Only two thousand dollars. Twelve monthly payments of one hundred and sixty six dollars. Nah. Nah. I think I'll be good. I think I'll be mm-hmm. okay. Later, man. In a few years, Lit Clips is going to be a huge thing. We're going to kick ourselves in the chins. Oh God! As soon as I save up that two thousand dollars to buy Lit Clips, I'll be, I'll be set. What would you put on it? I wouldn't even put anything like to do with Lit Clips. I'd probably just redirect it to our podcast. <laughs> just advertise merch on it. But yeah, it's a it's a cool little project. It's called Pocket Sprite. Um, you can find it at pocketsprite.com. dot com, and um. It's interesting. I really like it. It's meant to be the world's smallest device that can play Game Boy games. Wow. And it is very small. Is it hard to play with your, to, with your big boy fingers? A little, but um, <laughs> but Pokemon is fine. I have to slot it into this bigger Game Boy <laughs> to play it properly. <laughs> we also had, you had to buy this bigger device with a big controller to plug into it or something like that. <laughs> I kind of want to get one of those phone clips that, like, you clip your phone into it and it's an old controller. Yeah, oh, my God. You've been talking about this for, like, three years. It'd be cool. But that said, like, I'm equally able, and I have done, is just hook my PS3 controller up to my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I could just do that. There's yeah, no reason to get the other thing. But I want it to feel like a device that I play games on. Like. a Game Boy. Not just be my phone. I have a Game Boy. I don't. I don't. I want to emulate. I don't want actual games. Here's my problem with your Game Boy case that you slot your phone into. It's the size of a Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it tinier. I don't want it. In, I don't want. I don't. I'm not doing it for convenience. I'm doing it for nostalgia, and functionality and convenience. <laughs> <laughs> but like Game Boys don't work anymore, man. They just don't. Like I have mine. And the games don't work. Like, I have Pokemon Silver and Crystal and all that. But, like, you can't save in them because they're ancient. You replace the batteries or whatever. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't have any magic moon juice that I have to put into the bloody things. <laughs> I, think, I, think what, I think what I really need is a really... what my ne- The next logical step is a really big Game Boy. A La- very large Game Boy. Like a big one. <laughs> like, like, like the size of a computer... But it still looks like a Game Boy, <laughs> like an arcade, bo- like an arcade box. Oh yeah, but it's shaped like a Game Boy Color with like the big buttons, like sized up. I could make you one of those. <laughs> you want one of those? <laughs> what? I could easily make you one, like an arcade-sized Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, that looked that looked like an arcade box, and it genuinely clacked like a button with the clacky buttons. I could definitely do all of the components required to make it the part where it looks good is the hard part maybe i could do that part we can paint it i maybe. could get my get my normal game boy and just stretch it out over the top i guess you carve it out of foam or something mm. or buy like a novelty game boy um boogie board or something <laughs> yeah okay yeah and you put that over the front <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, but not really. Like it's no, not really. It'd be cool if you had both that thing you have, but also a full size Game Boy, and you plug the little Game Boy you have into the big one, and then you could also play it on the arcade machine. That'd be dope. Yeah. Um, do you want a couple lines of this bad, bad book? Yes. That is also just one page. Give us all the lines. Every single thing. Yeah. Give us all of it. All right. And then if it's too much, we'll put it on a different episode. A collaborative story. Oh no, all my guests are dead. A murder mystery. Wait, do you need me? Do we, do we want to bring this on my screen and I'll read some other dialogue? <laughs> all right. A collaborative story. Oh no, all my guests are dead. 
a murder mystery. This wine is so strong. Poldry remarks, turning towards the wine cabinet. Oh dear, it must be the wrong bottle. Why'd you keep scotch in the wine cabinet? Asks Jay, finishing her glass and holding it out to grab a refill of scotch. Ah, that's the scotch. It's pretty late. I didn't notice. Replies Edward, the gathered party's host. Sometimes you need both, both and fast. Jay says, taking a sip. The scotch indeed strong and tastes expensive. All right then. Well, this is all very nice. Remarks Ophelia with a hint of sarcasm, turning towards Edward. Though you never did explain what the occasion for this event was. Thunder claps rattling the stacked bottles in the cabinet, shaking a glass into the floor. Edward stands in the middle of the room, over Jamelia's body, which now lies bloodied on the floor, scotch pouring from her lips. Harrison, who had been sitting closest to Jamelia, cries out in shock, a sound that is echoed by several others in the room. Oh no! Edward cries. It's happening again. Jamelia, no! Poldry yells. The scotch! Edward, get the scotch! <laughs> That's your priority right now, Poldry? Edward asks, still grabbing the scotch despite his question. He begins pouring a glass for himself. It's probably clearer now exactly why I've gathered you all here this evening. He says towards nobody in particular. The room goes silent. The eight other people, all with rich, well-thought-out backstories, shuffle anxiously in their chairs and nurse their drinks. Edward's voice drops to a low but powerful whisper. Murder. Murder of the first degree kind. Someone call the police, yells Frederick, leaping to his feet. I'm afraid no one shall be doing anything of the sort, replies Edward calmly. There are no phones to be found in this house. That seems inconvenient. Jay mutters. Edward, Edward, what is the meaning of all this? Ophelia screeches, clearly rattled. Edward leant against the wine cabinet with his back to the group, twisting the cork off of a bottle. It hardly seems to be the time to open another bottle, she said, curiously. The end. I feel what we need to do is, like, colour code these sort of things if we make it a thing ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, this, probably... these are your lines. Because, like, I think we both read Edward's lines. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like both I like both the murder. Murder of the first degree kind. Like, the drama of that line. And also, like, the prioritizing the scotch. Just like, Jamelia, no! Poultry yells, the scotch! Edward, get the scotch. Also, the concept of, like, they died and the scotch dribbled out of their mouth as if maybe they don't like scotch or they really <laughs> like scotch. And they've just been nursing it good. in their mouth. Going, Did that character talk at all before? <laughs> this is good chewing scotch. <laughs> like, who died? One sec. It was Jamelia. Did Jamelia say anything? Um. Yes, Jamelia had the first line. They said this wine is so strong. Yeah, and she didn't drink it. <laughs> Wait, She's not drinking scotch, though. She's drinking wine. No, she thought it was wine. Okay. Yeah. I like the concept of, like, I don't know, they're not, they died so <laughs> suddenly they didn't even swallow the drink or spit it out. They just went <laughs> and dribbled all, the, dribbled all the, the juice out. I don't know how far this murder mystery story can really go, but I'll let you know if we write any more. Um, we've got to do our bird story or <laughs> something with that at some point, because I did actually um, yeah. record a reading of that. Yeah. Right. All right. We need to finish it. Where is... I can't even find that thing. Okay. If you... Yeah. I might add something to it tonight or something. Um, but I think that's going to wrap us up. Hopefully that some of that was salvageable. Unless there's anything else you want to add. You know, it's just always good to get back to the simplicity of life in with a heap of birds. As the summary of this, wasn't it? I think so. Um, so thanks for listening to the But Yeah podcast. It went left, it went right, it went all over the place. It didn't quite go in a straight line like you'd think a simple podcast would, but it was still good. I assume it felt good. I don't know if it's good to listen to. I enjoyed it. I hate linear paths. I like I like stories that curve and swing all over the place and I don't know where I am. I like those I like those pulp fictiony things. I think we did a good job of Simplicity Day. It was very loquacious. Man, I've said that twice. I can't. You can't use that word twice within the first that same year. I'm gonna put it in. A, I'm gonna copy that in to a time you didn't say it, and it'll sound like you said it three times. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Loquacious. Um, so you can find us on Twitter at but yeah pod. Um, you can find the show at butyearpodcast.com. You can send us a, an old timey email at butyearpod at gmail.com. Send us a fax. Send us a fax to 3333333333. Send us a fax and then tweet it to us. 
People still use faxes. Did you know that? That blew my mind when yeah, I was no, <laughs> encountered that. Ridiculous. It's wild. It's wild. But yeah, thanks for joining us on this show. We love that you come and listen. Um, even though it can be pretty wild sometimes, maybe that's what you like about it. Let us know. Tweet us, please. We need to know um, so that we can adjust the wild knob up to three. It's currently at two. Turn that. We want to turn that wild on up. Yeah. Um, until next time. Uh, I am Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And I'm that boy. (laughs) That's my tag. You can't steal it. Uh, Goodbye, everyone. And I'm that loquacious boy. We'll see you next time. Bye. That was a good right angle turn. I liked it. Yeah, I'm happy with it. That's it. I'm happy with that one. Got it in one. Hey, if you like this show, you might enjoy my new wordplay comedy podcast called One Letter Better, where me and a good friend podcaster guest sit down and take the titles of things you submit, love, and send in and make them, well, you get it. It's One Letter Better! Available on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.